Here in England, there's a popular legend. Just outside an ancient city lived a fire-breathing dragon. In order to pacify the dragon and satisfy its hunger, every day the people of the city gave the monster two sheep. When the sheep failed to satisfy the dragon, human sacrifices were required. Lots were drawn to determine the victim. And one day, the lot fell to the daughter of the king himself. The king offered all his wealth to purchase a substitute to no avail. And so the young maiden, dressed as a bride, was led away to the marsh where the dragon lived. There was a soldier, a follower of Christ, named George, who happened by and saw the condemned girl. When the dragon attacked, George outfought the mighty beast. He then asked the maiden for her garter and bounded around the scaly neck of the dragon, after which the princess was able to lead it like a lamb. They went into the city. The grateful king offered the soldier up to half his kingdom, but the man refused. He simply asked the people to consider the Christian faith. The people rejoiced and were baptized. That's the legend of St. George, the patron saint of England and the dragon. A myth, surely, an allegory filled with symbolism. But in the center of that myth is this strange creature. Where did such a creature come from? Dragon legends are found in many cultures and traditions all around the world. Dragons abound in Chinese children's stories, Babylonian legends, and Aztec tales. In Japan, dragons are generally considered friendly creatures. Children read stories of great dragon keepers and heroic dragon riders. Medieval European legends feature dragons who lived in wild, remote regions, guarding great treasures. Images of dragons are preserved on family crests and national shields. But what could have inspired all these stories? Is the dragon simply the creation of inventive minds? Or could dragon stories be based in reality, possibly related to dinosaurs or other amazing reptiles that we find in the fossil record? Many scientists contend that dinosaurs died off over 60 million years before humans came to be. The possibility that humans and dinosaurs ever coexisted is unthinkable to them. But what does the Bible say? Genesis 1 tells us that God made the animals of the land, air, and sea in the same week that he created human beings. In this case, humans would have been alive on the earth at the same time as these creatures. Dinosaur fossils, believed to be laid down during Noah's flood, suggest that dinosaurs were certainly alive at the time of Noah only a few thousand years ago. And since the Bible tells us that Noah took pairs of every kind of land animal on board the ark, he certainly brought dinosaurs with him as well. This is consistent with recent discoveries of soft tissue and red blood vessels preserved in dinosaur fossils, a find that suggests dinosaur bones are not nearly as old as many scientists assume. One of Noah's descendants is Job, and in the book of Job, we find two mighty creatures, probably the largest animal on land and the fiercest animal at sea. Behold now, behemoth, God says to Job, as recorded in chapter 40, which I made along with you. He eats grass like an ox, his strength is in his loins, and his power is in the muscles of his belly. He moves his tail like a cedar. 
Some Bible footnotes suggest that this may be a reference to an elephant or hippopotamus. But ask yourself, does the tail of an elephant or hippo look anything like a swaying cedar tree? Look instead at this depiction of a sauropod dinosaur. Doesn't this resemble the behemoth described in Job? There's one possible place where the Bible describes a dinosaur, and it would be the behemoth described by God to Job in the book of Job. And God's talking to Job about a specific animal, and he goes into a great amount of detail to describe this animal. In fact, it's one of the most detailed descriptions of an animal in the entire Bible. He's got a description there, several verses describing his attributes, his characters. When you compare those descriptions with living organisms, it doesn't fit. But it does fit the description of a sauropod dinosaur, the brontosaurus type dinosaur, the apatosaurus dinosaur. It's big, everything about it is enormous and strong, and as you read that, you can picture in your mind immediately one of the great sauropod dinosaurs. I suspect that the animal described in Job chapter 40, called Behemoth, is in fact a dinosaur that lived in the days of Job. The book of Job not only describes a behemoth, it also tells of another creature, this one called a leviathan. The, the animal given the name leviathan is described as a sea creature, fast moving, covered with scales, uh, apparently can come out of the water to interact with humans at the surface of the water, has teeth, terrible roundabout, and so on. And most amazingly, it's described as breathing fire. Out of his mouth go burning lamps, and sparks of fire leap out. Out of his nostrils goeth smoke, as out of a seething pot or cauldron. His breath kindleth coals, and a flame goeth out of his mouth. There's a lot of mystery with Oviathan. It's a most extraordinary creature. So if dinosaurs lived alongside humans, and Noah even brought pairs of young dinosaurs with him on the ark, what happened to them? Where did they all go? When I find f fossils of dinosaurs in the record, I also find with them other organisms, including certain kinds of plants. I suspect those are the plants dinosaurs actually ate. If that's the case, then dinosaurs ate a different type of plant than we find commonly today. They ate a gymnospermous type of plant that is uncommon in the present. So the dinosaurs had food, but it was limited. And so I suspect the numbers of dinosaurs were kept to a very small number following the flood. I suspect there were few dinosaurs about, making it possible and this is what I believe happened to them ultimately for humans to pick them off, to kill them. Perhaps humans killed predatory dinosaurs because they were afraid of them or because they wanted to show off. When you start with a biblical perspective, the text and other evidence suggest that dinosaurs and other incredible reptiles of the sea and air once lived alongside people at the time of creation, during the flood, and for centuries thereafter. So it is hardly surprising that the world would be filled with legends of heroes like St. George and their encounters with mighty beasts.
grew up fascinated by dinosaurs, watching movies, collecting models, reading all about them. Dinosaurs were big. They were magnificent. They were awesome. I was taught that dinosaurs once ruled the world, but that millions of years ago, they disappeared from the earth. Everything I believed about the age of the earth, the cycles of life and death, the evolution of humankind began with dinosaurs. And then I learned that the Bible presented a very different history. Kim here is my colleague, fellow paleontologist. We've been friends since college. Today we study the same fossils, we use the same techniques, but that doesn't mean we agree on what happened here. We do interpret our findings differently. You see, fossils don't come with tags on them, telling us how old they are, where they lived, what they ate, or even how they died. We have to figure that out from the clues that we find. We never have enough clues. So, our starting points usually lead us to different conclusions. Well, here's how I see it. I think this dinosaur died over 100 million years ago. It dried out in the sun for a long time. Um, and later, I think the specimen was uh, covered by river sediment, uh, which was caused by a local flood. She's been lying here all this time till we dug her up. Where Kim sees millions of years, I see evidence of a different history. I believe this animal died in a flood, but it wasn't a local flood. It was a massive flood that covered the earth, Noah's flood, when God judged the world. The carcass was buried suddenly, before it could be eaten or decomposed, buried in a layer of sediment that stretches across the entire continent. Since the flood, according to the Bible, was about 4,300 years ago, that's how old I believe this fossil to be. We come to different conclusions because of our different starting points. I start with the Bible, my colleague does not. We all have the same facts. We merely interpret the facts differently because of our different starting points. 